Hi. I'd like to show you what I'm working on for Liblast. And that is a asset workflow, especially for environment art, and an Uber shader that enables this workflow. So what we have here is a very simple model that uses one material and a set of prepared UVs, but both of the UV channels used here are prepared with a single click after you set some seams. And the effects of edgeware are also fully automatic after you bake the vertex colors from a um, prepared node group in Blender. So let me show you this model without without a material. Looks like this. And these are the vertex colors. I'm going to show you exactly how this is made. Let's look at another model though. So this was the first model I made for that. That's a little chest. Uh, and as you might notice the scratches are in different places on every every instance of that They're moving around a bit and that's just uh, one effect of of doing this procedurally so an artist isn't placing like all these scratches and marking edges for to be worn these this is figured out um, automatically, and the artist can tweak the parameters of the what was found generated automatically. For example, here is an edge mask. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to make this material unique so that all the parameters here are not affecting the other models. So we have base material. The base material is our general metal texture, which provides a subtle normal some roughness in the base color. We can modulate the base color with an albedo parameter, and I'm making it darker here. There's a bunch of settings here. Uh, there's an option to remap the roughness, uh, the metalness as well. So now we're made the base material fully metallic and very smooth. We can make it full metallic and very rough. Well, we can make it semi-rough and non-metallic. This is half metallic. Let's make it fully non-metallic. So this is a painted metal, a metal painted gray with edgeware revealing steel underneath. Mm. There is an option also to like make the normal map stronger. Normal map of the base material stronger. Uh, which for this example is just very, very... Oh, actually it affects all normal mapping. Okay, that's no good. <laughs> I need to change that. Right, then we have edge effects. And edge effects is crucial. You see, without edge effects, this looks like a block, because that's what it is. And edge effects adds a special little uh, atlas texture, which was prepared in Material Maker and mapped in Blender using in the add-on Dream UV. And this maps every face to its closest rectangle in, in this atlas. And this creates fake beveling. But not just fake beveling, this also provides information for edgeware. Like, where are edges? So if I disable the edge effects, you can see we still have scratches and stuff, but this is now only based on vertex colors. Mm. However, we can enable edge effects and still don't use them in making of the, of the texture. Here is our scratch texture that's going to be... I think that's going to be a channel-packed mask. Um, channel pack texture for multiple different effects, maybe rust, dirt, or, uh, 
maybe, I don't know, water dripping, stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, lots of options still. And then we have procedural effects, edge wear mask, and this is where we build our match, our the mask that affects uh, edge wear. So if I reset this all to defaults, which are something that you know I came up with, seemed nice. So uh, we can turn this pretty much off by giving no effect of uh, yeah edge effects. Put the powers high because if you if you multi, if you put a parameter that is um oh what you can also do is reset uh this to zero so our edge effects are not affecting roughness or metalness of the surface so you can see now we have like a pristine factory new thing with, with no edge wear uh, but then we can make it's so uh, our edges reveal bare metal our edge edge scratching <laughs> and now we can this is an uh, like a general thing so if i turn this to one edge wear mask bias this is an offset curvature power yeah so first thing is this is normal uh, this is the vertex colors so in blender Let me show you. In Blender, uh, let's make this full screen as well. Oh. What do we have in Blender is a special node group called Vatex Color Baker. And if I view this node group via cycles, you can see that it creates these funky colors. Now, what's inside? Is it creates a channel packed mask where it packs ambient occlusion, it packs edge uh, information, and it also packs dirt, which is a different kind of, um, sorry, this thing, a different kind of ambient occlusion plus different stuff of edge information. And channel packs all of this into. RGB and this we bake it with cycles bake the emission to the active color attribute which is our vertex color so this gets baked into our mesh like this and exported into GLTF and we import it and we have the vertex color data that can help us uh, achieve various things for example, let me see. Base material. I wonder if ambient occlusion. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have ambient occlusion, and this is fully. This is baked from vertex colors. Uh, this isn't a, any specific texture or something. This is for vertex colors. So we get this ambient occlusion for free, but then we use the same information for edge wear because where, is, where ambient occlusion is high, then edge wear should be low, etc. Yeah, so we have the ambient occlusion. We use it for scratches as well. Mm, there's also other effects that will be possible, like dust settling from the top, dirt that accumulates in the crevices. Uh, Potentially rust working similarly. A lot of different things that can be done. And all of these, once you set up a material, are pretty much just drag and drop and forget, you know, once you prepare the, the mesh, which is really quick because actually, you know what? We need Suzanne. We need Suzanne. Give me monkey. Right, so we'll, we'll make Suzanne do this. Uh, let's go with this. Yeah, Vertex Color Baker. I'm going to shade it smooth. Actually, we could give, give her a little bit of subsurface. Maybe just one level. And, whoa, okay, let's apply that. So the Vertex Colors do bake 
into the subdivided geometry. Actually, we could subdivide even more and see how those auto load handles it. Yeah. What about making a super dense? super dense geometry okay so what we do is we bake the uh, active code uh, we bake the emission to uh, to vertex colors mesh doesn't have a control attribute uh, okay we need to add a color attribute vertex color let's go like we could, could make it byte color and i think that's safer um, bake Well, actually, we just need uh, 64 samples, maybe, for ambient occlusion and stuff. Doesn't need to be this expensive. All right, and now this is baked in our vertex colors. Uh, now we need to UV unwrap this. So one thing is edge, edge effects. So this is uh uv1 this is uv2 which i oh no it's uh okay which is reserved for light maps and uv3 now in our shader we can configure which uv channel does what for example there is something called the udim variance which means that we can vary very different parameters of the material based on our UVs and how they are displaced. And we can define up to eight different variants. And we can say which one, which UV channel we use to like determine these. Oh, what did I do? That was weird. So, yeah. This is on channel zero. And we use the same channel for edge effects, texture UV channel here. The base UV channel, uh, texture UV base channel. Oh yeah, actually it should be our channel 2. Yeah, channel 2. That's right. Right, so... Uh, it's going to be hard to find any edges here. But what I'm going to do is try to smooth it by angle. Maybe we'll find some hard edges. I don't think so. Yeah, this, as you can tell, this is mostly meant for uh, a I hope I'm not going to overload this. Okay, uh, this is meant for hard surface modeling. And because this is an organic model, then it might not necessarily work very well. Okay, so it pretty much mapped everything onto this this chunk, uh, which is fair. And UV2 is what we're going to do for base color and well, this would do. I mean, we already have UVs, so we don't need to do that. Okay, now let's uh, export this model. We can export it using the batch export, which is an add-on for Blender set up for exporting this. Yep, click batch export. Uh, exported one file. Okay, let's move it to Gdo. Should import our model. Now if I search Suzanne, there she is. Right, so now she doesn't look very fun, very, very happy because of the vertex colors. But as soon as we give her a material, and I have one pinned here. Oh. Right, we need to make children editable, and then we can do it here in the material override. Shloop. And that's our Suzanne. I think I'm going to give her a different material, though. Right.
right. Okay, we can see a few things. I'm going to make this unique. And base material, textures, UV channel. It's going to be second one. Yeah. And we could make this UV channel a little bit denser. So I'm going to multiply by four. And now you see we have our paint scratched off at the pointy stuff at the pointy edges <laughs> right here around the high holes which is a little bit weird i'm gonna rotate our so we have a little bit of a different lighting yeah it looks kind of weird but as you can see it does work now if you want her eyes to be different uh, what we can do is go to UV1 again. Actually, yeah, UV1. And let's select our eyes. Lop, lop. And now I'm going to GX1. Move it to the second Urim in X direction. <laughs> and we can also make her ears. Okay, now let's just go over eyes. Q, batch export, because I added to this favorites. And there we go. Her eyes are now on a second Udim. And that means in the material, we have the Udim variants and variant one. This is what we can do with our eyes now. We can make it metallic override roughness power. So this makes our eyes smoother. Yeah, that's the very basic of how you can use this to quickly make a model that fits the, the rest of the environment and um, has some wear and tear. And once we add, once, once we have dirt and dust added to that, uh, I think it's gonna, gonna be much, much nicer still and should allow artists to really whip out environment art for Liblast very, very fast, which means we'll be able to build a nice environment for players to have fights in. Yep. That's all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video with the Liblast dev update, I guess.